Okay, today's went so well when I did the projectile launched horizontally that I thought I'd go ahead and I'd make one for projectiles launched at an angle. So in the hierarchy of difficulty of problems for projectile motion, horizontal projectiles are the easiest, then projectiles launched at an angle, which we're going to do now when they land at the same height, like when you're in a field and you launch a cannon and it, the cannonball lands back on the ground. Uh, the more difficult kind is when you launch a projectile at an angle and it lands at a lower height or a higher height for that matter. So here what we're going to do is we're going to launch a golf ball that's going to leave the ground and it's going to be traveling at 60 meters per second 23 degrees above the horizontal so it's going to look sort of like this and it's going to make a parabolic path like that. Now there's some things we need to keep in mind about projectile motion in general. First and foremost, the X component and the Y components are completely independent of one another, with the exception that they're linked by time. Meaning the horizontal velocity stays constant horizontally and the vertical velocity changes. So it's a great positive Y component when it leaves and a great negative component with the same value when it lands. So what I like to do is I like to actually use blue to represent the Y components and red to represent the X components. So when you first launch a projectile, it's going to have a pretty substantial vertical velocity. Now, the actual value of the vertical velocity depends on two things. Depends on the magnitude of the velocity that you launch it at. Naturally, faster velocity, faster horizontal comp or vertical component. Also, it depends on the angle. Now, the Y component can be calculated using sine. So the Y component of a velocity, in this case the initial velocity, is going to be the initial velocity times the sine of the angle. So sine, if you remember, goes from 0 to 1. So when theta is 0 degrees, in other words, when it's horizontally, there's no Y component. Sine is 0 degrees is 0. The biggest you can get is when theta is 90 degrees. When you launch it at 90 degrees, the sine of 90 is 1, so the y component is the same as the magnitude of the launch velocity. <clears throat> the vertical component of velocity is going to be given by the cosine of theta. So in this case, the initial velocity in the x direction is going to be equal to the initial velocity v naught times the cosine of theta. Now I like to use red to show x components. And the reason I do that is to remind us that we want to keep the x components and the y components separate. So you don't want to mix them up. When you do that, I call that making purple. For example, the acceleration horizontally is zero. The acceleration vertically is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So you want to make sure you don't mix those up. Now as the projectile continues to go along, you've got to be careful because the Y component gets smaller. Remember, positive velocity, negative acceleration, that's a negative change in velocity. So it goes from very positive to less positive to at the top at zero. And then as you go further along, that negative change in velocity makes it a little bit of a negative vertical velocity. And finally, when it lands, and this is an important piece of information, as long as you're at the same height, the vertical velocity is exactly the same magnitude as it was in the beginning. It's just the opposite direction. So the x component of velocity actually stays exactly the same. So it's going to stay exactly the same throughout the flight. Now, we're dealing with a projectile that's launched at an angle but lands at the same height. The reason we do this next is it's a special case. Whenever it's launched and lands at the same height, you can make a very important assumption, which is that the time up is exactly the same as the time down. So the amount of time it takes to go up and reach the top is the same as the time it takes 
to reach the bottom from the top. And up here at the top, the accel well, really everywhere, the acceleration in the x direction is 0. And the acceleration in the y direction is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. But also at the top here, the vertical velocity. Now, it's not the initial vertical velocity, but the vertical velocity is 0 meters per second. So keep all of this in mind as we go through the problem itself. Now, for your straightforward projectile launched at an angle, landing at the same height problem, the projectile question can only have so many parts. Things you want to be able to do is you want to be able to calculate the horizontal and vertical initial velocities, the flight time of the ball, both up, down, and also the whole time, the maximum height or altitude, the maximum x distance, also known as the range, the final horizontal velocity, the final vertical velocity, and the direction that it strikes the ground at. So those are really all the kinds of questions that can be asked. So let's look at them one at a time. Now, in this problem, I've actually given you the answers ahead of time because I figure that will help you. But let me show you where they come from. So we're doing the horizontal velocity. I like to use red for the x component. So to get the x component, the x component of the initial velocity is going to be equal to the magnitude of the initial velocity times the cosine of the angle, 23 degrees. Now if you're doing these problems, one heads up you want to keep in mind is make sure if you're plugging in degrees, your calculator is in degree mode. If you multiply 23 radians, you'll get a very different answer. So when you plug that in, you should get this number, 55.23 meters per second. In the vertical direction, I like to use blue, certainly not a requirement, but it's going to be the initial velocity times the sine of the launch angle, 23 degrees. So when we plug that in, again, this is 60 meters per second, that's going to give us 23.44 meters per second. Now the overall flight time, the way I recommend approaching this would be to go right from the definition of acceleration. Acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. It's going to be final velocity minus initial velocity over time. Now keep in mind when we're doing this, really we're talking about the y direction. So you want to make sure you keep that straight. So in the y direction, the final velocity is the negative of the initial velocity. So the y velocity initially, 23.44 meters per second. Finally, negative 23.44 meters per second. So negative 23.44 minus negative 23.44 because that's a positive initial over the acceleration negative 9.8 meters per second squared should give us this time 4.78 seconds. Now really maybe I shouldn't put the time in blue because the time doesn't just belong to the vertical component. The time's actually the same for the vertical or the horizontal component. Either way, it's the one thing that stays the same between them. Getting the time up, well, if you recall, the time up and the time down should be equal. So what that means is that if it takes 4.78 seconds to get up, or to, for the whole process, the time up should be one half that. So that should be the total time divided by two. Again, this only works because we're dealing with a special problem where we're landing at the same height that we started at. If that was not the case, those times would not be equal. But we are. As far as getting the maximum height, you can uh, do this more than one way, actually. One way you could do it is to use the distance equation. So we're dealing with the y direction, so let's go with blue. Equals the initial velocity in the y direction times 
the time plus one half a t squared. So the initial velocity in the vertical direction was 23.44 meters per second times the time, which was 2.39 seconds, because we're dealing only with the way up. So in the projectile, if this is the initial, we're making this the final at the very top. Plus 1 half times negative 9.8 meters per second squared times the time squared, 2.39 seconds squared. You plug that in, you should get this number. By the way, there's another equation you could have used, which would have been to do VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. The final velocity would be 0, and the initial velocity would be the launch velocity. And you could solve for it that way. As is often the case with these problems, there's more than one way that you can do this. To answer the question of how far it lands, well, that's an X question. So the range is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction times the time. So this will be the total time. So the initial velocity in the x direction was 55.23 meters per second times the total time was 4.78 seconds should give us this number. The final horizontal velocity is actually exactly the same as it was when it was launched, 55.23 meters per second. The vertical velocity is exactly the same but opposite to what it was when it took off. So if on the way up it was 23.44 meters per second, when it lands the vertical velocity will be negative 20. three point four four meters per second. To get the direction, think about this like a vector problem. As it's going and it lands, you have a horizontal component, fifty five point two three meters per second, and you've got a vertical component that's twenty three point four four meters per second down, which is going to give us a final landing velocity like this. So there's a uh, magnitude and there's a direction, just like when I, if anything else. So the magnitude of that final velocity is going to be equal to the x component of the initial velocity squared plus the y component of the velocity squared. Take the square root using Pythagorean theorem, and that should give us uh, 60 meters per second. So I guess I should really put this down with this question. Now as far as getting the angle that it lands at, the reference angle, you want to use the inverse tangent of the y component over the x component. So that's going to be the inverse tangent of 23.44 over 55.23 and that's going to give us a theta that is 23 degrees. To get the overall direction, because remember that's the reference angle, that's going to be 360 minus 23 degrees is going to give us 337 degrees. And that is pretty much all the straightforward projectile motion questions you can ask. Now we'll look at this next when you have it a different landing height than a starting height, but the concept is going to be the same.